I want to show you something that I found and this was across the road at a neighbor's pastor uh, and his pastor and I obviously got permission called and asked if I could get permission to go in and grab it. There is, there were about five or six others along with this. They were in what they call a fairy circle. So you can see and there was dots kind of in an angle where they were starting to make their way around. I, I'm not sure why they do that, but um, they're almost obvious when you see them because it just looks like a big giant ball, like a white ball. And um, they're, they sound... I don't know if you can hear this kind of almost sounds like you're pecking on a watermelon a little bit um, because this is solid on the inside um, puff balls just sit a little bit on the ground you can see that little dirt spot that's all that it was sitting on as far as coming up from the ground um, it has mycelium and then it just there's spores that just comes up I'm not an expert on mushrooms um, not a professional, not an expert. All I know is that over the years, um, my family and I have hunted mushrooms. We're more specifically um, experienced in the morels and hunting those. Those only come around in the spring. These are puffballs in my area in Indiana where they come out in mid-September to mid-October. And it has to be right condition for them, right area and right condition for them to come up. So, um, and kind of a nutrient rich soil kind of where there's dead leaves dead organic material there and if it's rain so last week we had about three days of constant rain it seemed like and then now the sun is out so these are popping up everywhere and they're kind of big um so this is what you're looking for i love the feel of this i can't explain it it's just really it's a solid mushroom. It's actually a little heavy compared to normal mushrooms that you pick up. Um, but it's, it's, it's like a melon almost. It's solid. So what I want to do is I want to cut this open. And we want to look inside because on puff balls, there are some lookalikes. But you want to make sure that obviously when you pick mushrooms, you know what you're doing first. I'm not a professional. I'm not going to tell you to go out and pick certain ones or what to pick. You need to do your own research. Um, but I know on this particular type that there need to be solid white on the inside. So I have a sharp knife and a fish fillet knife will work. And this is what I'm using now. Yesterday I used a fish fillet knife. I'm gonna cut this right in the center. I wiped the dirt off from around. This is dirt remnants, but I used a towel, a moist towel wiped around the edges. And, oh, that is a beauty. That is absolutely a beauty. So there you go. That is the inside of a puffball mushroom. It is solid, solid, solid. Full, this is when you're thumping. It, it, there's no empty spaces in here. And this has kind of a moist feeling. Um, you're not gonna press on it and have liquid come out. You shouldn't. Um, but this almost, feels this feels to me like an angel food cake when you would cut it open and press on it, it's kind of got a little moist it's squishy but you want it to be solid white so yesterday i collected five six maybe eight of these and i want to show you when i cut this open now these are have been sitting here since yesterday but you see the difference let me lay this so it doesn't roll off. See the difference between that and that? Solid white, and that's what I would be looking for. Um, here's another one that I cut open. So out of the ones I collected, only half of them were edible, which was disappointing, but I still had a lot to be able to use. This one here has some yellowing on the inside, um, and I was disappointed in this one. This is the end of it, actually. But that one was about this big. It was almost two of these. It was a big, long, brain-looking uh, one. But when I sliced into the center, there was yellowing. And when you pressed on it, liquid was kind of seeping through, like a sponge almost. So it was starting to mature. Um, and here's a darker one. Here's another one. This one's not exactly white. I would not, when in doubt, throw it out. You know, to me, I'd rather not. I don't know that these would poison you or... Um, 
I'm just not going to take any chances. All I know is this is what I found. I'm super tickled with it. And um, what am I going to do with this? So I'm going to slice this up. And I personally am going to dehydrate these. And the reason why is and I might fry some up to eat actually today just because this one's a fresh one. Um, you can slice these up and I'll show you. I love the way this looks and sounds. It almost sounds like you're... You can hear it squeaking as it's going through. You slice it up in slices just about like this. I laid that on that dirty spot on the table. Apparently there's dirt there. Um, just like that. Fry it in butter in a skillet and that is fantastic. It takes on the butter um, and absorbs it. So someone mentioned the consistency of almost like a marshmallow that you've melted in butter. Um, they have a woodsy flavor to them and a woodsy smell. The smell to these are similar to the little button marshmallows that you get at the store. So I think they smell really good, which is kind of like a, a woodsy smell. And you fry these in butter. Some people have fried them in onion and garlic, but they're fantastic. Just slice them in little slices like that. But I, um, I'll probably have some of them like that today, but what I'm gonna do is slice mine in like this squares and then I dehydrate them and here's a set that I've already dehydrated and you can kind of I can kind of hear it almost has a feel like a star foam really um, I don't want this to go bad this is not gonna last long as a matter of fact if I left this sit here probably by morning this will not be edible uh, or start to at least maybe start spoiling. So I want to keep these and I dehydrated my, the other ones that I got that were edible and that was really easy to, to break. And then I'm going to grind these up into a powder and I can make them into tea. Actually, I have a cup of tea here that I made in my little teapot and I have pieces of it in there. It just, um, you probably can't see that from the TV, let me see if my knife will get a piece of that out. Probably not. Oh, I did get a piece right there. I didn't grind this one into powder. I broke it up in pieces. I was a little anxious. I wanted some today. Um, this particular tea, I have a chamomile pack in there, but I also have a little bit of turkey tail and a little bit of puffball mushroom in there. So um, it's very good. Oh, I laid that on there. And I, I um, sweetened mine with honey. So I have a teaspoon and a half of honey in here so good very good all right so I'm gonna cut these up let me put my dried one back on there and you can put these in soups and stews as they are you can dehydrate them into blocks like this and put them in stews or you can grind them into a powder which is what I'll probably do just for space saving benefits and use them in soups stews, powders. Um, right now, mushrooms are making huge strides in their medicinal properties. There are many studies that have been made and many more that are going to be made. Like I said, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professional, but um, really start looking into your mushrooms because these are, this is like free food. Um, they're fun to find and um, just make sure you do your research first. I've been researching um, various mushrooms, not this particular kind, but various mushrooms for about five months, maybe, maybe six months. And I'm looking into putting a mushroom habitat in our property. We have a few spots that are ideal for it. You can buy spores online um, and they'll even tell you how to get the area prepared. Every mushroom is different. So most of them, you know, some of them want to be on a certain kind of tree. Some of them want to be more in the sun. Some of them don't want any breeze at all. Um, there are some that are great for beginners, great for um, the more intermediate type of mushroom growers. But um, I've been taking mushroom for a while and as a supplement, and I'm noticing a huge difference. I'm not going to get into all the discussion about that, but the one product I'm taking right now is, um, I got this online at Amazon. This is six mushrooms. It's a, like a, I don't know if you want to call it like an extract or, but <clears throat> you can see that's a little brown in color. There is six types of mushrooms in here. And if I remember right, I can't see on my glasses. I think there's chaga, 
um, cordyceps, turkey tail, um, all the, oh my gosh, there's so many of them. Lion's mane, the, some of the main mushroom, medicinal mushrooms are in this and there's six of them together. <clears throat> and I take a dropper of these a day and I can tell, I can tell the difference. So mushrooms are great. Make sure you know what you're doing. They're fun to harvest. They're fun to find, especially with the puff balls, which we're talking about today. Um, make sure they're solid white on the inside. They're popping up like crazy. I'm seeing a lot of social media um, posts on these. Just make sure they are solid white. If it's anything, when in doubt, throw it out. And to brag, I want to show you, this is a post I put on my Instagram feed recently. And these are my turkey tail haul. This is what, two, I don't know, it doesn't say in gallons, probably a two and a half gallon bucket maybe. There's two, two gallons worth of turkey tail in here. And let me see if I can find a really pretty piece. I have a bag I'm gonna give to a friend. Isn't that beautiful? Grows on the side of a tree like that. You can see how it kind of shelves out. And I'm looking for just the right one. And if you get on my Instagram feed, you'll be able to see why they call it turkey tail. Maybe this will be a good enough one for you to look at. Look at that. The color variations on there. And I'm going to dehydrate these, put them in a powder, and also make these for tea. And you can put these in soups and stews also. So look it up. There's plenty of information out there. Always make sure when you try to source information before, especially with things that can hurt you, like certain mushrooms are super poisonous. So make sure that you source it from multiple areas. Don't just go and look at one spot, say, oh, okay, this is great, and then go out and find it because, you know, there's just about anybody can post anything out there. So make sure, I like to source things from no less than four places, anywhere from four to six or more um, books and social media and places like that, that way you know. Um, and another thing that is a smart idea is, is to buy a book of the mushrooms in your state or in your area. Um, you can get books of, well, I'm from Indiana, so you can get books of Indiana birds, Indiana mushrooms, Indiana trees, so that's in your area. And then you can carry that with you. And then if you get reception, of course, we don't get phone reception out here, but you could look that up. But I would always make sure that you do your research first before you go and harvest. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please enjoy your puffball mushrooms. I know I will. And comment below. If you have found anything, please share what maybe you do with your mushrooms. And like and subscribe our video. That will help my channel start to grow. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.